This is a very important problem for coding interviews, especially for all the FANG companies because it has been asked quite a few times in all of these FANG companies and it's called maximum product subarray. So if you have solved maximum sum subarray, which we solved using CADAMS algorithm, then uh, this solution will be inspired from that idea. So here we are given uh, a list of integers. It will have positive and negative. That's why that's the only challenge because if everything is positive, then there, there is no challenge multiply everything similarly in the sum case so there are a few challenges due to zero because if you have to find subarray and not just subset in subset you can pick random elements but in subarray it should be a contiguous chunk from this original array so if you include zero no matter what other values are this entire thing will be zero so zero has an important role to play similarly negative numbers have an important role to play so if you are, have a subarray which has just one negative number, then no matter what other numbers are excluding zero, then the entire thing will be negative. If it has two negative numbers and no zeros, then entire thing will be positive. So that's why negative and zero play very important role here. So let's take an example and we will uh, understand our logic within that example. Uh, so let's say uh, we have, uh, let's say minus three, two, minus four, six, Let, let's add a zero also, minus eight, five. So this is a good enough example and we will cover all the scenarios. So uh, what is a subarray? First of all, it will have one index that will denote the start of subarray and this index would be from this to this. Uh, here it's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is the start index and this is end index, last index of the subarray. So these has to be between zero and six, include, including both. So how can we find it? So let's say we have to break this problem. Of course, I'm not talking about the naive solution. First of all, uh, if you have to find all such pairs, then there will be n square possibilities. So that is the naive way of doing. So you can list down all the n square substrings, subsets, subarrays, and check their products. So that is very naive. If you don't, you don't have any solution, you can start with this in the interviews. But obviously this is this will not give you too much of credit. So we are talking about the optimized solution. So how, how can we break it? So whenever you encounter a problem, you have to think how can I break it? Or how, how can I solve it progressively? So uh, we can start from left. If you have solved uh, the sum array case instead of product, you would be familiar with this. So let's say you are given just one element, then what will be max and min, max ending here and min ending here. Why are we keeping min? Min, we will come to that. And there is one additional uh, constraint mentioned in the problem that you are not allowed to select empty subarray. That is, you have to pick at least one. I think this was mentioned. Let's do it again containing at least one number. So you cannot leave it empty. So even if everything is negative, you have to pick one. So that's why uh, here, if it's even if it's negative, we will pick it. So maximum ending here will be minus three and minimum will also be minus three. So uh, why minimum? Let's see. So we have, let's say some subarray and we had seen till this index and till this index, this was the best subarray we had found so far that is with maximum product so when we look at this next element either we will extend this previous one or we will not extend it so let's say the previous one was negative so previous one was negative this part and this part is positive then we will not include it we will just take this one because this is negative quantity and current element is positive so if we multiply everything, it will be negative only. So we have a better solution. That is, if you take just this element, this will obviously be better than this, extending this. So we will take this one. Now let's say this is also negative. Then what we will do? We will check what is the minimum so far. So if the uh, current element is negative, then whatever was the minimum subarray that we can form, which ended at previous value, and if we multiply that, so this is the smallest possible value. So it, it's negative, let's say. Then if we multiply this 
with the smallest negative value then it will become the largest possible positive value since it will have odd number of uh, negatives so this will make it positive so this min is important here this max will not do let's say this max was 10 and uh, this is negative so if we take just this value then we will get a negative value if we multiply it to this one it will be even more negative because it was already 10 so let's say this is minus 2 it will become minus 20 so this is even worse so both of these we will not pick and we are keeping track of the minimum that we can form and hopefully this was a very large negative value and this minus 2 will double its magnitude but change its sign so it will become a big positive value so that's why we are keeping track of minimum so also let's understand what are the roles of zero and negative how they differ so let's say zero is here and uh, here also now there are some values so let's say one case is that you include this zero in the subarray then this will be zero so this kind of resets it so you lose any significance of numbers before this any calculation you have done for max or min as soon as you reach here and you decide to include it everything becomes zero so it kinds of resets it or breaks this uh, array into different chunks so you can treat this part this part this part so it breaks it and what does negative do negative will flip it flip a large negative value will become large positive value and the positive will further improve the positive value so we need all the three so you can write it based on case also like uh, you initialize with the first element for first one you have nothing to compare you have to take this so you can write like let's say we have a function f and this array is a then you you have uh, max so far or rather this is the global maximum so let's call it overall max or max overall equal to a zero let's say we are assuming that it will always have at least one element since the problem mentions that we have to take one element at least so this is max overall max ending here this will also be same and min ending here this will also be same then we have to run from 1 and not 0 to n minus 1 where n is the size of this so you can write if uh, a i equal to 0 then what will happen this will become 0 all of these will become 0 max ending here because ending here means we are including it so as soon as we include it positive negative everything becomes zero so this will become zero min will become zero if it's positive if the current value is positive then we check if max ending was uh, positive then we will multiply it if uh, max ending was negative we will take just the current element so this you can write Similarly for min ending, if uh, min ending was positive, then just multiply it with the max ending. So whatever is the max ending and if that, that is positive, multiply it. That will become further positive. So that will be the max. Or uh, you can do just one thing. Why keep track of so many conditions? Although you can exhaustively write it and it will be very close to your understanding. But uh, let's see, we can do it in shortcut. So why worry so much about that? Just see that max ending here equal to max of three things. Current element, when max and min were both negative, then multiplying current element which may be positive would make it further negative. So in that case, we will pick just current element. Or max ending here multiplied by current element so let's say this was a good positive number so and this is also positive then multiplying will help so we will take that in that case and min also has a special role to play in the scenario where 
ai is negative so this is the case where min ending here will help min will keep track of a minimum possible value till this point so this is a large negative value and this current value is also negative so it will become a large positive value and we will not get that by max because max may be a positive value so multiplying it will not help so it will be in all the cases all the cases that you can exhaustively write it will boil down to this thing that max of these three quantities so this we will do for each index and also we will compare this max with this overall max so this overall max will be updated whenever we get a better solution and finally we will return this similarly min ending here will be min of this one min ending here multiplied by all three quantities but you are not doing them simultaneously these are previous indices value so once you write this max is updated so you cannot use this so before doing this save it in a temp variable and that should work so let's write this let's implement this logic so if you have not cl understood it uh, clearly then pause for a moment think of it what are all the scenarios first write it exhaustively using this kind of logic uh, that ai is zero ai is positive ai is negative and then within that also check what is max and min whether they are positive or negative and ultimately it boils down to this scenario that we will be always comparing these three for taking the max and min so first we will write in c++ nums 0 And uh, uh, I forgot to mention the time complexity. Uh, what should be the time complexity? We are just scanning this array from left to right. And that is just one pass and we are keeping three variables. So time complexity is O of n. Space complexity is O of 1. Also uh, let's complete this. So this is max and min. Here max will be this current element 2 product of max ending here that will be minus 6 and min ending here minus 6 so we will pick 2 and min will be minus 6 now max will be uh, this min multiplied by current which is 24 and min will be uh, take all 3 that is uh, it's minus 4 minus 8 so it will be minus 8 and then uh, max will be 24 multiplied by 6 that is so what is this 24 signifying this minus 6 is signifying take these two and this 24 is signifying uh, whether you take just this or these two or these three so this two was for max so this minus 6 incorporate these two and we multiplied this to this so we are taking everything then uh, we have 144 and then minus 48 then here it resets 0 0 then uh, 0 take it 0 then uh, min will be so you can calculate the rest uh, we got a max here I don't think we can get any better because once we include 0 that will be 0 so this is the best you can get
so this max ending here has been updated we want the previous value So if we have more than two, then we need to include it in this list, initializer list. Now it works. Now let's take uh, our own example that we took. So it was, I guess, minus three, the first one, then we had two, then minus four, six, zero. minus 8 5 and we calculated 144 and it matches with our answer and the solution is accepted it's here you can try a few times it can go left or right that much of variation can be there now let's write it in Java and Python Here you cannot assign multiple values, you have to do two at a time, this max and min functions. That's why we have to compare three numbers, so we have to take it two times. And the solution is accepted. Finally we will do it in Python 3. And the Python solution is also accepted.